Being here together with us means that you completed all or most of the other modules that are part of the course Introduction to Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning. While you learned quite a lot about different algorithms and methods within the domain of machine learning, there are many, many more possibilities out there. If you recall the machine learning landscape and machine learning taxonomy that were introduced in the very first module of this course, we can see that the supervised and unsupervised paradigm are only two of many different paradigms, and even all of those do not show the complete picture. While we got to know many different algorithm classes, looking at the machine learning taxonomy, decision trees, regression, kernel methods, and clustering algorithms do not show the complete picture either. In fact, even within this set of algorithm classes, there exist different algorithms, with more to come as machine learning is a very active research field. The reason why these methods were selected is the introductory nature of this course. Supervised and unsupervised learning algorithms already cover a very wide variety of applications, and the presented algorithm classes are well-known and popular choices for simpler, but also more complex applications and show an overall great performance. But as you are at the end of this course, where to go from here? An algorithm class that did not make the cut into our course are the distance-based methods. As the name suggests, these methods use distance metrics to calculate how far away or close data points are to other data points, and then decide what label fits best, utilizing a voting method. For example, majority voting or weighted based on distance. For the distance metrics, any of the existing metrics that calculate the difference between two or more vectors representing the data points can be used. But you could also go the extra mile and define a new one yourself. Examples are the Manhattan, Euclidean, or Hamming distance. Different types of data also require different approaches or accordingly selected preprocessing strategies before applying a distance metric. The distance could, however, also be defined based on semantics. For example, a cat can be of distance 1 to a dog, but of distance 5 to a fish. Another algorithm class that is quite commonly used was already hinted in a section for decision trees and random forests, the ensemble methods. The principle of these methods is rather simple to understand. The idea is to take a set of machine learning models, either the same algorithm as with the random forests, or different algorithms to create an ensemble of models. They can be used all together at the same time, where in the end a voting algorithm defines the final output. Moving to one of the more popular algorithms when it comes to recent progress in research, but also publicity, the neural networks. Neural networks start with the concept of a simple perceptron. In its most basic form, you can think of it as a linear function, similar to what is used for linear regression. Additionally, however, a nonlinear function is applied on top of it. This most likely also sounds rather familiar to you, as this basically describes the logistic regression. So where's the difference? Originally, the perceptron was defined to use step functions. Thus, the difference lies in the type of nonlinearity applied to the underlying linear function. Then, if you stack multiple perceptrons as a composition of functions, you arrive at a multi-layer perceptron. The MLP is also considered a feedforward neural network due to its nature of simply forwarding its input without many modifications. Feedforward neural networks, however, are only a part of the vast variety of different neural network architectures. The more layers such a network has, the deeper the network will become. Hence the term deep learning, which is the umbrella term for any deep neural network-based approaches. On the other side of the algorithm classes, looking back at the machine learning landscape, we still have our set of different learning paradigms. Whereas supervised and unsupervised learning cover a wide spectrum of application areas, as already mentioned, another notable mention is the paradigm of reinforcement learning. Reinforcement, in this context, to put it simple, refers to a way of learning that is very similar to how we learn whenever we get a positive or negative feedback to one of our actions. The machine learning models learn through the idea of action and reward, meaning that for some action or prediction the machine learning model takes, some kind of oracle provides an appropriate reward or penalty. Let us take a brief look at one of the most well-known applications, self-driving cars. In this example, consider driving on a straight road. While staying within our lane, the model continues to collect positive rewards, whereas if the car is getting off its track, the model is presented with negative rewards. This simplified example shows the underlying idea of the method. The model is trying to achieve the highest possible reward. And, as you can tell, there is much more depth to the presented machine learning landscape and machine learning taxonomy that can be explored by you.